Hey, I'm Gavin. Mark from Dredge. And you're watching Katori Magazine. This song's called I Don't Know. Thanks for listening. Cause there's no guarantee of a God of longevity. Admit you don't know anything and give it up. I think over the span of, you know, 10 or 11 years, you become better musicians. You kind of figure out uh, different techniques for songwriting. And then um, in the studio, I think we are always searching for more ideas to, to uh, create sounds that we are happier with each time, so. It has all the elements of our career, you know, basically put into one album. I mean, me personally, I'd definitely become a lot better singer than I was. I didn't know what I was doing on our first record. Never thought I'd be a singer, so now I've kind of feel like I've found my place and know it's, you know, what I'm doing. We were on Interscope and they dropped us. So we figured, especially nowadays with the way things are, completely doing as much as you can yourself, I guess, is, is the thing we really wanted to do. I think it's more on the, for us, where we're at in our career, it's like a perfect place to be. It felt like we were completely on our own. It was a very, very liberating feeling. Looking for a savior. writing the record and uh, Drew gave me a, actually a birthday gift. It was Christopher Hitchens' Portable Atheist book. And it's a compilation book of, of agnostic and atheist uh, writings throughout the centuries. I and mean, that was one of the things in the book was uh, the Salman Rushdie essay. So I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I cried when I read it. Yeah. It's a very, very hopeful, hopeful essay, um, but also very honest. And I think that's what we, we really love and we we try to strive for is is you know sometimes life can be bleak you know and you can say hey this is tough but it can be hopeful at the same time you know I think a lot of people you know they, they don't want that they don't want the truth because it's hard but I think it's also a very beautiful thing Expected many lives you left a void so wide gonna get all that you asked for it's gonna eat you up it's gonna drag you down gonna get during the writing process, um, Gavin and I kept having these conversations about, you know, what his lyrics were pertaining to with the new material. And when I read the essay, it was just, it was extremely close in the sense of what we were feeling, you know, and what we were writing about. Um, so I, I thought, why not have it as kind of like a loose uh, guideline to, you know, sum up the record, you know, as a as an influence, and then also the artwork. Yeah, it played a huge role in the art, artwork, the uh, packaging, how we delivered the, the record, you know, kind of the concept of the record being the letter and, and it being for an unborn citizen. That's why it's obviously we're over six billion now, but it's addressed to like the seven billion, you know. Although we messed up and made the return address to seven yeah. billion, <laughs> but don't tell it's me. It's okay that. though. <laughs> Our bass player, Drew, is uh, a member of the Spin.com book club. And so through that, uh, a lovely lady named Emily Zimler, um, who's, I guess she's in charge of the book club? Yeah, I think she's she in charge of the book club at Spin. Uh, through her, she reached out to Solomon Rusty, and he was kind enough to agree to do this uh, charity event on October 1 in New York. My first feeling was um, how I feel about Salman Rushdie in general is just how honest he is and how brave he is in many ways you know and it takes people for you know like him for a change to ensue and you know it's I'm once again going back to this event I'm really excited about first of all meeting him and then you know collaborating with him on an event like that and it's such a great cause you know housing works HIV and AIDS charity so it's a good thing all the way around if I go so what pisses off Dredge? Um, when you hear a band on the radio that you just you can't believe it on the radio, and then but they won't play us. 
that, that kind of thing, you know? And that's an analogy for bigger things, too. I guess just the idea of working your ass off and not feeling rewards can piss us off. Um, what else pisses us off? That drive um, from Omaha to Denver pisses me off. <laughs> A lot. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, people yawn in the audience. <laughs> But we're a really boring band, so it's <laughs> Maybe start writing some new music at some point in 2010? Start a new yeah, record, maybe? We want to get a record out sooner than last, the last one, you know? More touring. Um, we're about to go to Europe. We're about to go to Australia for the first time, so... Hopefully just keep doing that, opening up new markets that we've never been. Maybe an acoustic show that we record. Yeah, maybe okay. like an unplugged album, basically, maybe. Yeah. Of course, as you get older, you get a little wiser. And hopefully. So, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, with our <laughs> lifestyle. What's the, uh, the, the great saying, the more you see, the less you know? Kind of one of those things, right? Grizzly would win. Yeah, easily. I think gorillas are more, uh, I mean, I know they can get violent, but I think they're more, they're more, like their bark is bigger than their bite, is what I've heard. Um, so they're extremely scary, but I don't think they're nearly as, as violent as a grizzly bear. I mean, a grizzly bear will, will rip things apart, and, you know, until yeah, it's Yeah, I don't think left. they can compete with the claws of yeah. the teeth. The claws of a they're grizzly bear. They're definitely strong, but, I don't know. Grizzly bears are bigger and probably stronger. That's different kinds yeah, of Yeah, I, I think that wouldn't even be close. <laughs>